This is lesson 1.7 on the distributive property, and we're going to throw a little bit of stuff on like terms in as well. Remember that you're going to use this video for your benefit, so at any point, if, it, if I'm going too fast or if you need to take a break or you need to back it up and watch it again, just hit the pause button or back it up. The learning target for today is to use the distributive property to simplify expressions. So, I'll give you an expression that looks like this, 3 times parentheses 1 plus 4. Most of you would just say, oh look, there's parentheses, I'm going to add 1 plus 4 together. And then I multiply 3 times 5 and get 15, and that's the correct way to do it. You might also notice, though, that there's a 3 on the outside of a set of parentheses, and this indicates that you're going to use the distributive property. The distributive property just means that you're going to distribute this 3, or give it, to each part inside. So you're going to distribute it to the 1, and then to the 4. And when you distribute, you're multiplying. So it's 3 times 1, plus 3 times 4. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 3 times 4 is 12, 3 plus 12 is 15. Same answer. Now, if I were you, I'd be asking myself the question, why would I ever want to do it this way when this way is so much easier? And the answer is you wouldn't do it this way because the other way is so much easier. But this is a demonstration of how the distributive property works. When do you use the distrib distributive property? When you have an example like this one. So copy example one in your notes. This problem says 7 times x plus 8. And the reason you'd use the distributive property is because you can't add x plus 8 together. They're not like terms. So you have to distribute. So when you distribute the 7 to the x and the 7 to the 8, you get a new expression. Now I'm going to show you how to write it out. And some of you will say, well, do I have to do it that way? Yes, for this assignment, I want you to write out each step. So here it is. 7 times x is just written 7x, seven, 7 times x, plus 7 times 8. 7x is just 7x, plus 7 times 8 is 56, and that's your answer. Notice the problem is written, there's one step in between, and then your answer. And I'm going to change this to a positive 9. Now sometimes we'll get tricky on you and we'll put the number on the outside of the parentheses, but we'll put it on the back side. The concept is still the same. You're still going to distribute the 9 to each term inside the parentheses. You're just distributing backwards. So in this problem, I'm going to multiply 9 times the first number, which is 4, plus 9 times the y. And notice I didn't put a little dot between the 9 and the y. I didn't put the y in parentheses because a letter next to a number is implied to be multiplication. 9 times 4 is 36, plus 9 times y, or just 9y, and that's your answer. Okay, moving on. The second example here shows a division, 7x plus 2 divided by 5. Now, if you look in your book, the explanation that's given in the book is a little complicated, and it's one that I'm choosing not to show you. I'm just going to show you the quick and easy way to do it. So to do that, I'm going to give you a simpler example, like 1 plus 3 over 4. Well, if I give you a problem like 1 plus 3 over 4, you would take 1 and add it to 3 and get 4 over 4, and 4 over 4 is the same as 1. But you could also take 1 plus 3 over 4 and separate the top two numbers and write it over the same denominator, like this. 1 over 4 plus 3 over 4. And 1 fourth plus 3 fourths is 4 fourths. And 4 fourths is 1. Same answer. And just like the first example I showed you, this is more complicated. And you wouldn't do a problem like this in this way. But when I give you an expression that has a letter in it, like x, then you have to do it this way. 
So in this example, example 2, 7x plus 2 over 5, all I'm really asking you to do is separate the top two terms and write them each over the same bottom denominator. So the answer is 7x over 5 plus 2 over 5. And that's it. Now remember, if you get confused, you can back it up. And also, if you get confused on a problem and you've watched it again and you're still confused, put a little mark in your notes, and then when you come, class, come to class tomorrow, you can ask me questions on that. All right, the third example has some negatives in it. And there's a couple things that are, that are happening here. The first thing that's happening is there's a negative sitting outside of the set of parentheses. And that negative really just means negative 1. But I, I'm going to just suggest to you that you just leave it as a negative. The se second thing that's happening is there's a subtraction in the middle of the problem. And in algebra, you want to change that subtraction to be adding the opposite. So in this problem, change the subtraction in the middle here to add the opposite. And again, if you've never seen that before or are confused on that, make sure you mark your notes and ask me when you get to class. So, the negative on the outside gets distributed to each term on the inside, and you're going to write it out. Negative times negative 3 plus negative times negative 2z. This negative is this one and this one. A negative times a negative is a positive, so the opposite of negative 3 is positive 3, plus a negative times a negative is positive, so 2z, the answer is just 3 plus 2z. Okay, second part of example 3, part b, same situation. Outside of the parentheses you have a negative, only this time it's a negative number. On the inside you have a minus, so I'm going to change that to add the opposite, add the opposite, and then you're going to distribute the negative 5 to the negative 3 and the negative 5 to the negative 2z. Write it out. Negative 5 times negative 3 plus negative 5 times negative 2z. When you multiply negative 5 times negative 3, a negative times a negative is a positive, so that's 15, plus Negative 5 times negative 2z, a negative times a negative is a positive, so that's positive 10z. And that's it. That's your answer.